We are live on Facebook with the man, oh, Big there's... Dog, Demarcus Evans, at d.evans underscore on Instagram. Let me give you a quick rundown mm -hmm. real quick before, uh, before mm -hmm. he gets into it. He played high school ball in Mississippi, drafted mm -hmm. by the Texas Rangers out of high school, currently on the 40-man roster, six mm -hmm. foot four, 270 pounds. Big Dog, yeah. <laughs> uh, right in the picture, 23 years old. Uh, last season, 2019, he had 100 strikeouts in 60 innings with a .90 ERA in double-A. Balling mm -hmm. right now, out of control. <laughs> Before we started the recording, he said he was making some big strides. And, yeah, I would say that's huge, man. So, with that, mm -hmm. uh, the first question I want to ask you is, how is this impacting you? Because you're like, you were on a roll, man, and now, like, we're shut down. Like, how is this impacting you? I mean, um, it's – I ain't going to say – I mean, it's, I'm still working and still keeping the same thing, like the same mindset and everything. Every time I throw, I keep the same focus. I mean, that's, I'm still getting my work in, so I just try to make it – like when I'm throwing my bullpen and stuff, I try to make it as much as, as possible as like a game simulation or something. So, it's still, I'm still working, still doing the same thing, just working on my breaking ball a lot better. That's awesome. Speaking of breaking ball, what pitches do you throw? Oh, I throw fastball, curveball, and it's like it's like like a slur slider sometimes. This is breaking ball. <laughs> you. Sometimes you it sometimes it's twelve six, sometimes it slides. So I was like, well, I mean, as long as they get them off my fastball, that's all I need. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you have a ball near you by chance? Yeah, I got one. Yeah, one right here. It's a major league ball. How come that ball looks what? so small on your hands? <laughs> <laughs> it's so small. I can <laughs> just put my hands around it. <laughs> hey, so, all right, can you go through your pitches and show us how you grip them and, like, tell us what you're thinking about, how you're trying to throw them and manipulate the ball? Yeah. I mean, some guys, like, with the, on fastballs, they usually throw it with the, with the backward C on the ball. But me and my friend Joe Ballo, we probably, like, a few guys that throw it with the C, like a regular C. So I put, I hold my fastball like that, and with the thumb, some guys hold their thumb under here like this, but some I just hold my comfortable just like that. But my fingers so long, so it like wraps around the lace. <laughs> <laughs> but that's my fastball and breaking ball. It depends on what like what count it is. If I'm just trying to throw like a curveball for a strike, like a, like with the question like that, I just put it like this, and then I try to wrap. I try to put pressure on this finger and try to so I can get the the shape right and then like if I get O2 or something I do the U and I put it on this side and I just try to make it see what the more I went up like the less guys chase curveballs like in front of the plate so I try to if I'm O2 one two 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 well like one two O2 and I try to make it bounce right behind the plate because that's what gets them to swing it the most because a lot of guys, some guys get smarter and better as they go up too. So it's like you got to have an edge on them sometimes. So I've been working on trying to make it bounce right there on top of the plate or like right behind it. And then That's you think you're messing around with the change up a little bit or no? Yeah, I was messing around with the change up. I had like the, the two tracks. I put one on this side and one on this side like that. And then are you trying to do anything special with your hand or anything or just come straight down through it? Well, some, sometimes if I want – if I, I just play around with it, if I want to, like, throw it for strikes and stuff, I just want to, like, the fade is on the out, I spread my fingers out. I mean, I put them too close together like that. Like, on the on the, on the on this lace, like, the, it's, the train tracks is on this side. I try to put this finger, like, on top of the lace. And when I throw it, I try to get this finger to go off the, the best. But you really – some guys use they – these two things will throw changes, but I'm like a power guy, so I just try to throw everything hard and try to get a lot of deception on it. So speaking of throwing everything hard, what is your top velocity, the fastest that you've ever pitched? And also, how was your development in velocity, like from when you were playing as younger all the way up till now? It was crazy. I mean, I, I, I played football in high school, so I really didn't have that like all the other pitchers have. They just pitch all the time and do pitching workouts. But I was doing football workouts. I stopped doing bench press on the bench in football because, I mean, they, they don't like what your arms get past here. So they my coach didn't let me do bench press. I just did a lot of legs and stuff. But in high school, I was like 89, 92, hit 93s. And I got the spring, and I got out here when I got drafted. And I was like 90, 91, 92. And then that next year in 2016, 
I was spring training, I was just regular 992, and then extended came around. And it's like, and then my like the first day I got there, I was sitting 93, and then the next day I was sitting, I was like, I was sitting 93, hit 94. Then next out, and I was sitting 93, 94. Then next out, and I was like sitting fours, I hit 95. And then next out, I hit 95. I was sitting four, three, four, five. Then I hit some 96s. I was like, dang, it's not going up. <laughs> and that's when my velos just started coming. But most of the time, like at the beginning of the season, I'd be like 92, 94, 95. And then as the season go, I'd be like 94, 97. So 90. My highs I hit was 90. My highs I hit was 98. 98. Wow. Wow. I'm trying. I'm trying to get it up, but all this analytics stuff. I really don't need to hit a hundred. <laughs> I just throw fastballs. I hear you. And what would you say? What would you attribute to the the biggest thing, like having that big jump that one year? What would you say was the big difference? Anything in particular, or mechanics, or or what you're doing in the gym? Uh, it was more. It was more about like just getting to know my body and getting it. Try to use more of my legs and start using my arm because I was a young guy. I didn't really. I mean, I had coaches, but. I mean, more of you go. I mean, these professional coaches, so they know a lot of stuff about like mechanics and how you how to pitch and stuff. So I basically just I was getting down to mechanics and I was doing a lot of. Run. I mean, we ran, we ran every day, we ran, we worked out. So as much as I got stronger and started getting my mechanics down pat, because I've changed a lot of ways. Because I I used to go, um, I wind up. I used to go straight up, and then I started like I'm a big guy, so my legs was like I was kind of flying over a lot. I mean, because I'm still learning my body a little bit, but then I just started getting simple, simple stuff to get me to, to get it easy. And I mean, it's getting better and better each year because I, I went from wind up to abbreviated wind up, like just sideways, like out of the stretch and go back, then up. Just keep it simple. And then 18, I just said, screw up. They moved me to a reliever, so I was like, screw it. I'm, not, I'm just going to bang the wind up because my friend Tyler Ferguson was like, hey, man, you're leaving now. You got to go out and stretch. I was like, all right. So I just worked on trying to get my mechanics right from the stretch, and it's coming out really good. Nice. Yeah, that's what I did. I, I only pitched from the stretch when I was pitching. And it, to me, it made sense because you eliminate a lot of movement. If you mm -hmm. can pitch well from the stretch, then if you need to pitch from the windup, you, can, you know, you're going to be able to pitch from the windup. But you're going to have to pitch from the stretch if you got base runners on, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's that's kind of how it made sense to me. Um Tell me, I know I went through like a little bit of your bio in the beginning, but tell me like, who is DeMarcus Evans? Like, give me your little baseball journey from when you started playing till like now. Well, my mom, see my older brother played, he was a pitcher and a catcher. And then my other brother played, he was a, he was a, a first baseman and, and uh pitcher. My brother was like a, he wasn't, ex, my oldest brother was the one that threw hard, but he he never had nobody to catch him because he was used to throw hard when he was like, 12th grade, he was throwing like 90. He was throwing like 90 miles per hour. He was a big guy. He was playing defensive tackle. And he was really fast. He ran like a 4'8". He ran like a 4'7", 4'8", in, in, uh, in the 40. And he was an athlete. And I just watched him play. And then my mom was working at this boys and girls club where I'm from. And I and me and my friend Taco and Fours, we all we we grew up here like we had a lot of guys that was freaking magnificent while I was growing. And we just started playing when I was like three years old, and it just went off from there like Dixie U, and then it just went off after that. And then I got to eighth grade. I mean, I got down eighth grade. We went end up. I was playing Dixie U, and I ended up moving schools to get the best thing for me. And after that, it just I mean, I really didn't think baseball was gonna be something for me. At first, I mean, I, I was okay with it in my town, but I never went outside. I mean, I went outside the state, but it was just like, oh, yeah, I'm all right. But then my 10th grade year, and I got started playing this Mississippi RBI league with my with one of my coaches, and we just went and played and stuff, and I was just doing pretty good. And then 11th grade, I had a good season, and I ended up having – they asked me to come play for this – like, I was in the – I was going to play with this Marlin scout team for perfect game. I really didn't know what it was. I never played perfect game in my life. Cause I ain't have my, I ain't have no money like that to be paying for all these tournaments and stuff like that. So, cause my mom was the only parent like that. So I was, and we had like five, I have five siblings. I mean, four other siblings. So I was like, we got, we got to take all that. So I had no, I, I couldn't pay for all that stuff at once. And this man called me up one time. I, cause I was playing with, I tried out for this. I pitched the day before, but then I had to go to try out for this perfect game. This uh state games in Mississippi state games is like, this big thing, like where all the best baseball players in Mississippi, you get, you play, you play, you play on uh, divisions, 
we put on divisions and they pick and like all the schools around just come watch y'all playing this one big tournament. And like Ole Miss and State, Jackson State, all these people. And when I made the team, they called me and said I made the team. And then right after you called me, the Marlin Scout team called me. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to play there. I'm going to go play around up like in Florida. Like I've never been a Florida like that. So I was like, I'm going there. I'm going to play. So I told him I was playing. I went there. And as soon as I got to Atlanta, the perfect game man called me. He was like, this is the market. I was like, yeah, this is me. He's like, so you got to get fans, but I was like, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> and I went to Perfect Game, and I went, I went to National Showcase. I just went out there just throwing. I, str- I ended up striking like I went. Str- I think I struck out like four and two innings with no hits or anything. And it's like, man, who is this guy? And then I just went after that Perfect Game. I was out there just striking everybody out, going complete games, seven innings. And then that's when I guess I got on the map, and it just changed with then. Wow. And so what is your strikeout pitch? Is it more your fastball or you go with your breaking ball? Well, sometimes it's like if they want me to work a lot more on my breaking ball. But mostly I just like going out there and just – if you go, I'm, I'm going to give you my best thing, my best thing is my fastball. If you're going to hit it, you're going to have to show me you hit it. Because if you keep falling off, I'm just going to keep coming back with it because you got to show me you can hit it. So I, when I get on the mound, I'm just like, it's either you or me, so let's go. <laughs> and, <laughs> but sometimes I get a lot of strikeouts on my curveball. A lot of strikeouts, but mostly it's just my fastball. Nice. It just depends on what hitter it is. I saw a video of you um, where you were pitching, and it seemed like your a lot of your strikeouts were fastballs up in the zone. They were chasing it. Mm-hmm. Is, that, is that what you mm-hmm. typically try to get your fastball to do, or do you try to get it to move and sink sometimes? Yeah, so I mean, I'm a four seam guy, so I don't have I don't have run or anything. It's just the analytics stuff say I got good fastball, like the vertical moving, the spin rate, so. That helps. It's like a. I just I just throw the ball up and see. If, I mean, most time, like how my bat, my fastball is, where you think the ball is, it's gonna be like, like how it is. Like this vertical movement is like. So if you throw a fastball, high gravity, it it catches the ball and makes it go down. But my fastball got true spin, so it just stays the same. Just stays the same. So they project like where the ball is supposed to be. Like say if I'm throwing a four seam down the middle. Uh, uh, any other pitcher, they ball to like sink a little bit because how how gravity works. So I guess sometimes my fastball, what defines, I mean, just makes gravity worthless because my fastball just swoop, it just takes off. So guys think how they swing and they try to go, try to swing the little. They teaching everybody to swing under, and I love it because I just throw fastballs and guys try to do it and basically just got to stay level on it, which they're not doing. So I just chunk fastballs and then sometimes if they own my fastball a lot. Because they teach us a lot. So if they follow straight back that many on it, they follow it late, they late. So don't throw them a breaking ball because they, they're going to speed that bat up. So if they just follow straight back, that's when I start going to my breaking ball, an 0 2 one 2 and they chase it because they think it's a fastball, which is not. So they just try to time it up, and it's not It's not right. <laughs> hey, thank God for launch angle, a pitcher's best friend. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it I again. love it. <laughs> well, you, got, you mentioned that you came from uh, – uh, you know, five, uh, five, four brothers and sisters and a single mom. What other struggles did you have to go through to make it to where you are today in baseball? Uh, what are some of the things that you had to overcome? I mean, you, I mean, you're not, I mean, a lot of guys get blessed with like people having, being fortunate with like their parents have a lot of, I have a lot of, um, have a lot of money or something like that. So, I mean, my mom had, that was pretty good. I had God mom has always helped me. Family always helped me when I have to go travel or something. That's all they had to over, overcome. But, I mean, when I got drafted, I was like, dang. I was like, I got drafted 25, the 25th round. So, it's like, you're not, you, ain't the, you ain't the same guy. Like, you can't go on TV and have this big draft party and stuff like that because you never know what's going to happen. And it, I end up going, like, the third day. So, it's like, it's kind of, kind of, kind of, like, it kind of motivated me but it kind of made me like a little sad because I thought I was better than what I what I was but I mean that's the only thing I have overcome to get where I'm at today and I just trying to make my mom proud that <laughs> my family. that's what I was gonna ask you next uh what was the feeling on draft day like what what did you have inside were you expecting it um was it unexpected or you know how did that go down like I mean I knew I, I knew I wasn't the guy gonna go like first First round, second round, third round. They always told me if I would draft this, it's gonna be four to ten. So I was like, all right, I'm I'm good with that. I mean, you still can get us enough money to do what you want to do when you go from fourth to tenth round. 
unless you're a senior signing when they just screw you over. But I was, I was like, I'm just ready for it. So the first day, I mean, we just had a – my mom just had, like, a little draft party just to do it, just have my friends over just to watch it. And then I was like, yeah, I, I know for sure I'm not going. And then all of a sudden, the third day, I told I told everybody else to contact me, the Cubs, everybody. They, they, actually, the Cubs going to take me, like, first and just give me the same money I was going to take. But I was like, at least give me, like, 100000 more, 50000 more. I mean, I'll mean, I, I give you what you want. Just give me some extra money or something. But then I told him, I was like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm just going to go to school for one year because my coach is going to be Chad Bradford. Because, I mean, he threw something in, but I just want to get – I just want to pick his brain to where, like, how he gets outs and what's the mindset from pitching in the minor leagues and the big leagues. So, and then all of a sudden, I was sitting there. I guess I was watching TV with one of my friends, and boom, and my phone just blew up out of nowhere. I was like – it took me a 25th round. I was like, I ain't calling for that. And then Chad Bradford ended up leaving because his son was going to Louisiana Monroe. So I was like, man, dang. So I was like, I'm just going to get upset. And then my friend told me, he was like, he was like, if you, if you, you, money doesn't define if you love the game or not. So if you want to get your, 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 I mean, your stuff started and get in there with professional coaches that's going to help you out, just go ahead and do it. I was like, I mean, I mean, a hundred thousand was good for a hundred thousand was good for a guy that never came from a lot of money. So I was like, I mean, I can, I mean, I'll still do it. So I just went and then I'm glad I did and it got me where I'm at right now. Yeah, because you're, you're killing it right now. So it seems like it was a good, mm -hmm. good decision mm -hmm. right now. So um, where were you – where was your mindset, like, coming into this season? Like, <clears throat> were you expecting in your head to break with the big uh, big team uh, after spring training? Or were you hoping to get, like, a midseason call-up or a late September call-up or something? Obviously, if this all the craziness didn't happen. Yeah. Yeah, I was – like, I, my mindset was, like, I mean, hope for the best, prepare for the worst. I mean, I, I still had a, a great spring trying to give up a run. I had, like, four innings with, like, six strikeouts and, like, two walks and, like, two hits. But everything – I mean, I was just sitting there, I was like, man, I, I just – I mean, we had a lot of veteran guys. We had, like, Cody Allen and all these guys have been in the big leagues for a while. So, I was like, man, I, I mean, I'm just going to go do what I have to do. I mean, if they option me, they option me. But I was kind of mad when they did because I, I was doing everything they asked me. But I was like, you got to think about the bigger picture and what's guys playing. So, I was just like – I'm just going to take it for granted. I'm just going to go to Nashville and freaking dominate and see what happens. I thought I had a chance. I, but I, in my head, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm getting up there in the next couple of weeks or next month. I'm not waiting until September. But that was, a, that was my mindset. That's a, great, that's a great mindset. Well, I was talking to uh, a, a guy who just got drafted recently as well as a former big leaguer before, and we were saying the mindset of those guys who end up sticking and making it in the, in the big leagues have the mindset of, I want to be a long-term big league player. Some of the guys who play mm -hmm. in the big leagues and, you know, have a cup of tea up and down, those guys always just said, I want to make it to the big leagues. And then there's guys who say, my whole dream is to get drafted. And some of the, those guys don't make it out of the minor leagues. Yeah. So mm -hmm. always having that that big mindset of like, you know, I want to stick around, get to the big leagues. Obviously, it's tough mm -hmm. to get there, but it's even harder to stick around. Mm -hmm. so yeah, you crazy. see, I mean, I saw, like, when I first got drafted and you see guys come in, like, these dudes in low A, Oh, this guy's in high A. This guy in double A. Like these guys are freaking good. It's free. And then after years go by, and you just sitting like, dang, like I'm in double A now. So I was like, this is weird because I was looking in 2015. I was like, man, I, I don't know if I'm ever gonna be that good and get up there and stuff. But it's all about patience and trusting guys playing and just going. But I mean, if I get to Billy's, my my main goal. I mean. My main goal is to want to stay up there the whole time because I don't, I don't ever want to come down because I go up there, I'm just give you all I got because I don't want to go down because, I mean, being in, like, big league camp and minor league camp is two different things. Like, big league camp is, like, like by far the best thing ever. Like, you get anything you need, food. I mean, everything is just off the charts. So, I was like, I don't, want, I don't ever want to go down. <laughs> and, I mean, it's just crazy. Yeah, that's a, uh, that's that you're so so right on that one. Let me ask you this: Who were your role models growing up, uh, as far as like athletes, or even if it wasn't athletes? You know, I always looked at stories. I was always motivated by players' stories, like what they had to overcome to get to where they are. Um, who were some of your uh, role models, and why were they motivating to you? Yeah, one of my best friends growing up, his name was Taco and Forbes. He played with the White Sox now. And he actually got drafted the year before me. He went second round to the Texas. 
And I was just sitting, I was like, man, this is wild. Like a guy from my hometown can really do some stuff like this. And then my cousin, Anthony Alford, he played the Blue Jays right now. He, that when in 2017, like he, like he was going to play, he got, he could have went first round, but he wanted to play football in college. So I was like, so he, he took, I mean, he still went third round and still got a lot of money. So he got the joint, um, the joint, uh, what is it? The joint play so you can play football and then come play um, baseball. So, and then 2017, I saw him get caught up. I was like, that just fired me up. I was like, that's crazy. Cause my cousin was like one of the best athletes I ever saw in my own two eyes. Like this guy in football was a quarterback. Mr. Baseball, Mr. Football, like he was jumping over dudes' heads and doing all kind of stuff. So it was just like, he just motivated me. I was like, I got to do it. I got to do it. And then I'm just trying to get to where he at. <laughs> That's awesome. Let me ask you this. What is a piece of advice that you can give to parents of young athletes who might aspire to be a professional pitcher like yourself? Like looking back on your – when you were playing in your younger days, high school or whatever, you know, what were some of the things that really stuck out to you? What kind of advice could you offer to those parents of those players? I, I mean, the best thing I can give them to, I mean, I'm like, let their kids get into like showcases a lot sooner than what they was. And if you was, if you're a player, it's a lot of stuff that they, they look into, like look and look for and to a player. So you gotta, I mean, they, they go and look at like, your, I mean, your um, your teachers in like third grade, teachers in fifth grade. They ask people around, like whoever saw you pitch. They ask scouts from other teams. They ask cross checkers from other teams. Like, what's your guy on this guy? They so when you play, you got to play as hard as you play. Like it's your last every game. Because I see a lot of guys that they get all this money and they get drafted and they go up or they don't do anything. They just and they get passed up. And I see a lot of, I mean, it's like a few of us left in 2015 that's from that draft because they, I mean, if you ain't coming and giving them what, what you want and what they want, they just let them go. So, I mean, I'm telling you, you got to grind, you got to keep your grades up, and you got to freaking do stuff that people don't see. You got to do a lot of stuff. You got to do the running, the the arm care, the try to define, your, get a towel at home and just do dry, dry drills or something and just freaking – Take it as like this can like baseball can change your life forever, like forever. Like you can freaking go up here and you can do it good all these years, and you can just make them. You see how Gary Cole just signed all that money, and it's like he grind for it. You just gotta grind. You gotta take everything serious and do what you gotta do to get there. When you get there, and you just gotta put your head down. Don't talk that much. I mean, you can still have the personality to have fun. But you got you got to take this as like this can help your future and your grant your kids' kids and your other kids. So that's what I think about now. So trying to get my family in great positions to where they ain't got to worry about stuff like that. So you just got to think about that. You know, it's funny. People always say, "Oh, you know, he was an overnight success. He had one good year and then he made it." You know, but they don't see behind mm -hmm. the scenes like you've been putting in the work mm -hmm. all this time to get to where you mm -hmm. are. Some people say luck is when preparation meets opportunity and if you're prepared mm -hmm. and you put in all that work when the opportunity presents itself and you take it and you make it happen you know that's that's when luck yeah. happens. and then it's, it's another good it's another good thing too you have guys around you that's always on the same ground as you because i got tyler phillips like see i had a lot of guys that's tyler phillips barlow cd pelham J it's a lot of guys that's been like that's been there for me so every time i like try to get down on myself or anything they just tell you like come on man don't do that you still got a little chance to go out there and throw you always gotta have that guy these guys in your circle that's always gonna believe in you no matter if they doing bad no matter if they doing good it's gonna always be a guy that's always gonna be there for you but rather not just because you play baseball and they're gonna have a friendship that's gonna last forever so it's always gonna have you always gonna you need guys in your corner that's always gonna be there for you always and it helps out a lot because these guys help me out too much like I used to have a guy like, I mean, my freaking mindset was all bad. Like, sometimes I get mad if I go out there and only strike out one guy. Because my goal always, if I go out and pitch in it, I want to strike out two guys. And if I strike out one, I'm I'm mad. And then I go in the dugout. Tom, he's like, what you mad for? Why? Why are you mad? I was like, I want two. He's like, that's good to have. But don't be a, a little punk and freaking go out here and show him you're getting mad and stuff. But you still had a good clean in. You had three up, three down with one strike out. And I was like, yeah, you right, you right. So I'm getting – to that mindset right now, I just I'm just overly competitive, and I always want to hit my goals every time. 
that's a good way to be. And it's great to always have a good circle of friends and family mm -hmm. there supporting you. That's mm -hmm. the way it's got to be if you want to have a lot of success. Let me ask you this. Where, where do you see yourself in the next couple of years? I know everything's messed up right now, but where do you see yourself in five, ten years from now? Yeah, I mean, if you see me, if this baseball start back and I get called up, don't look for me to be freaking in my leagues. If you gonna see me, I'm gonna be the next. I'm gonna be. I want to. I like. I don't, I don't like getting to the facts. Though I always trying to prove people wrong because that's the wrong mindset. You go try. You prove it wrong. Then it's like, what's that you got? So I just try to go up there. I'm a freaking dumb. Ain't how, how I know who I am. You can say whatever you want about me, but I'm gonna go out there and give everything I got, even if I go out there and walk five people, I'm still going to give you everything I got. It don't matter. So if you're going to see me in a few years, I want to be up there and I'm going to stay. You're going to know my name. That's how I want to see it. That's well, you going to see me. Well, I'm looking forward to watching you now, man. I'm mm -hmm. glad we uh, got to connect. And I'm, I'm so mm -hmm. happy and grateful that you came on and, and talked to us uh, a little bit. I appreciate it so much. Um, let me ask you this. Where can people find you at? Where can they follow you at? Oh, they can follow my Instagram, d.evans underscore. Or, I mean, you can follow me on Snapchat. I just like to have fun. So on Snapchat, I just be playing around, dancing and stuff, just have fun because I ain't got nothing else to do. I mean, most of the time you see a lot of stuff on even my Snapchat or my Snapchat is D Evans underscore 21 and my Instagram is D Evans underscore. But you can follow me on there. I'm always going to give you a good laugh. So you let me know. And I always show you what I'm doing because I like to keep my followers engaged in what I'm doing, where I'm at, how I'm doing and stuff. So I that's just, you can follow me there to get all the updates. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, there's no better way to, to learn, I mean, than watching someone who's going through it right now and, and mm -hmm. who's doing a great job going through it, mm -hmm. if I might add. So uh, keep up the great work, man. Again, thank you so much for coming on, and, and uh, we got to keep in touch for sure. Any, anytime. I'm always available. <laughs>